what's up guys so um i was trying to come up with content for this channel that was not a vlog since all i do is work and come home and sit in my comfy pants which i actually have on right now so i thought on my day off i would um film this a friend actually suggested it to me um uh, for those that don't know dave and i came into the relationship 15 years ago with three kids uh, I had one from a previous relationship and he had two from his first marriage and he also had one from a previous relationship. So we are a very blended family. We also have Owen who is ours together, but um, the biological parents don't actually see the kids. Uh, they haven't, uh, Gage hasn't seen his biological dad in um, 14 14 years I think it is he was not quite two when he stopped seeing him but um, I thought that I'd sit down and explain why because I'm sure that that will uh, be a question that I get eventually um, because everybody wants to know like where is so and so where is his dad how come his dad doesn't see him and all this stuff uh, at least I do when I when I see that somebody is not somebody's biological parent I want to know like does the biological parent see them so Gage is almost 16 years old he hasn't seen his dad his biological dad since he was just under two I think and um, there's good reason for that <laughs> um, but a little backstory um, Gage's dad and I were never in, uh, a committed, serious relationship. Um, I was 19, right out of high school, first job when we met. Uh, he was the dishwasher and I was a bus person at a fine dining restaurant, um, a few towns over. Uh, we talked a little bit. Uh, this was before the internet, before texting became a thing and stuff like that. So we really got to know each other sort of through work. I worked every day with him. Um, I knew what he was like, sort of, when I met him. I knew he drank a lot. I know I knew he smoked a lot of pot, which is fine. Like, you do you. But I knew all this stuff, and I didn't see a future with him. I just saw, wow, he looks like fun. I'll hang out with him type of deal. Like, I didn't envision myself being tied to him for the next 18 years of my life. Or longer. I mean, you have grandkids and stuff like that, right? So I did not envision that in the slightest. Um, but we started actually dating uh in february i believe and i ended up pregnant in march i was a bit of a hoe i guess <laughs> i don't know what to say about it uh i ended up pregnant and right off the bat I kind of knew that he wasn't going to stick around. Like, in the back of my mind, I knew that that wasn't something that was going to happen. He wasn't going to step up to the plate. He wasn't going to be the stellar dad that I wanted him to be, that I wanted for my kid. I knew that wasn't going to happen in the back of my mind. In the front of my mind, which was ruled by pregnancy hormones at that point, I thought, yeah, we're going to make this work. We're going to do this. We're at least going to raise this baby together. He's going to be here for it, even if we're not together. Because that's what he always said would happen if I got pregnant. Those were the words that came out of his mouth every time I brought up me getting pregnant. Because it was always a fear of mine to be a teen mom. I didn't want to do that. My mom did that. She got pregnant when she was 15, had my had me at 16. I did not want to do that. So, um, I mean, of course, I was out of high school and 19 years old by then, but still, I didn't I hadn't lived at all before I got pregnant. I hadn't done anything. <laughs> 
so um, I did end up getting pregnant and uh, after like 15 pregnancy tests I finally met him and told him and the first thing he said is well you better take care of it <laughs> meaning I should get an abortion and I'm not pro-life, I'm not pro-choice, I'm pro you do you. If you are okay with that, then you do that. If you want, if you can live with yourself with that, then you do that. I don't, that's not for me to decide for somebody else. But I know that I am not okay with that and I know that I can't handle that. And abortion was off the table immediately. It wasn't going to happen. Um, I did flip-flop between um, adoption and keeping the baby though. I was scared to keep him, but at the same time, I also was scared to give him up. Uh, I was scared, period. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what was going to happen. I just knew that I was pregnant and terrified. So I thought about it quite a lot. I talked about it with my grandma quite a lot, with my friends quite a lot, and uh, eventually I just came to the decision that I was going to keep this baby whether he wanted me to or not. Um, and maybe that's not the right thing to do. Maybe I should have included him a little more, but I'm of the opinion that it's my body, my choice. So um, I decided to keep him. And the guy, he didn't, he didn't jump ship right away. That's not how it happened. Uh, we were together for the entirety of my pregnancy. Um, we got an apartment together. Uh, he was working, I wasn't. Um, he was spending most of his time and money on alcohol and his friends and getting high. And I was an idiot and should have left long before I did. But that's not what was going through my head in when I was nine months pregnant. I what was going through my head was this this guy helped to put this baby on this planet. He needs to step up and help to raise it. Uh, so I stuck around. I I stuck with him. We didn't break up through the entire pregnancy. We were totally fine. Everything was good for the most part, like I said, he was drinking and doing his own thing. Uh, I do remember a few different times where I didn't see him for about a month at a time. This was before we got an apartment together. I didn't see him for about a month at a time. I would go to his house and his mom would basically tell me that he wasn't going to step up. And I refused to believe that he had always promised me that he would. So I, I wanted him to keep that promise to me. And I wanted him, I never wanted anybody to ever say that I just dipped out and didn't let him see his kid. I never wanted anybody to be able to say that. So I kept showing up and I became that needy girl <laughs> that wanted him in this baby's life. And Maybe that was the wrong the wrong move. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have let him just do whatever he was going to do and not worry about it. But I didn't. I I didn't. I was 19 years old. I I was an idiot, okay? <laughs> um then came time for the birth and he was there for that. He was in the room, he was fine. Uh, I came home from the hospital. We were staying with his mom for a few days or I would go there while he was at work and then um, we'd go home to our apartment. And um, 
everything seemed fine for a little while. He'd even call me to tell me that he was coming home. He would, he wasn't drinking a whole lot. Um, I know he was still smoking, but all the people at the restaurant did that except me, I guess. <laughs> and um, I just kind of figured, you know, this is, this is going to work. We're going to do this. This is going to be great. Maybe being a dad and actually holding the baby changed him. Maybe he wants to be in this baby's life. And so we progressed. And uh, even though I, I knew that I didn't see a full future with him, like grandbabies, um, he... He got an apartment, or a duplex, I guess, uh, and I moved into it. And my grandpa helped to fix it up because there were things that were wrong with it. Um, and we, we moved in, and we were there for six weeks. And then it hit the fan real quick. <laughs> in one night, uh, he was then single and without his child because uh, he thought that getting drunk and doing drugs were more important than his kid. So, um, basically one night around three o'clock in the morning, he comes home with one of his friends, uh, trashed, completely hammered. Uh, he tells me that he had been at a local strip club all night, and uh, I'm I'm not one of those uptight girls that cares. I don't. If you'd rather go spend money to see some girl shake her boobs than be home with me, then you do the you. I'm not. I don't care. But yeah, so he came home around three, 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 four o'clock in the morning. He came home completely drunk. And I uh, got up, Gage had been sick. He was uh, six weeks old, he had RSV, um, and he was on breathing treatments every couple hours, um, which was really scary for me. He was my first kid, I had no idea what I was doing. But um, I figured, you know, he woke me up anyway, I'll go ahead and give Gage a breathing treatment. and. This guy comes in and takes the breathing treatment from my hand and tells me that my doctor's an idiot and he doesn't need a breathing treatment. He's totally fine and I need to quit babying him. A six week old. I need to quit babying him. <laughs> So then I tell him, uh, bull, <laughs> that's not actually true and RSV is an actual thing and he does actually need the breathing treatment. Um, he got mad, uh, Gage is still in my arms and he pulled back to hit me, to punch me in the face while I'm holding his newborn in my arms. <laughs> so I set Gage down and um, I turned back around to this clearly drunk moron and I dared him to hit me. I said, please, please, please put your hands on me. Please see how that works out for you in the end. He didn't. So then he um, calls his mom. Yeah, I don't remember what he told her, but his stepdad came over. They lived just across town at that point. And um, he came over and picked him up. And I packed up a diaper bag and went to my grandparents' house 30 minutes away. And I told my grandma what happened. And that same day... My grandpa rented a U-Haul. Me, my brother, and my grandpa loaded up our entire apartment because all of the things that were in the apartment were mine. 
and um, I moved back in with my grandparents. Even though we weren't together and he was a drunk douchebag, uh, I continued to let him see Gage. I, like I said in the beginning, I never ever wanted anybody to have any reason to tell him, to be able to tell somebody that I wasn't letting him see his kid. Never. And because I hate people like that. I hate women that use their kids against their exes or their baby daddies because they're hurt. Uh, I wasn't hurt. I didn't, like I said, I didn't see myself with him forever anyway. So I wasn't hurt that he didn't care enough to see, to, to be an adult. I didn't care. What I cared about was the fact that he pulled back to hit me, one. And the most important, he was denying my son medicine that he needed to live, to breathe. He needed this to breathe. And he was denying him that. And all that went down. He continued to see him every now and then. He'd get him and an hour later uh, be calling me to come get him. Uh, he, of course, he told his mother and his friends and everybody that he would get him and then I'd come pick him up in an hour and say that he couldn't have him, which was not true. Um, it got to the point where we would get home 30 minutes away from, from his apartment, his duplex. Uh, we'd get home and he, he would call my phone and tell me to come get him, that he was crying and he didn't know what to do. And my grandma and I would go get him. I, I didn't care. Uh, if he didn't want him, I didn't want him there. So um, he would do that. And then one day I took him over there and he wasn't going to let me have him, basically is what it boiled down to. Uh, he ended up trying to keep him from me and like I said previously, you don't mess with my kid. <laughs> so he, uh, he tried to keep him from me and he, standing there in his drive, he wouldn't let me leave and he told, he called his mom and told her that he was going to take him and run. And he, I just remember him sitting on the phone saying, Mom, are you ready to do this? Are you ready to do this? And the only thing that flashed through my mind was, I'm going to go to prison for murder if this guy takes my kid. <laughs> and I would have. Because you don't run off with somebody's kid. No matter if you're the biological parent or not. You do not take off with someone's child and and do that to them. Ever. That's not something you should do. That's like a real douchebag thing to do. So I got a restraining order. He didn't see him for the entirety of the restraining order because he refused to uh, do visitation at the mutual spot like there when you have a restraining order on someone here they usually do something at the YWCA or the YMCA or something like that um they're in his town and the person who got their or the two people that have their restraining order they can they can have the other person they can do a switch and still not see each other and not violate and I was totally game for that. I was totally down. Uh, I said, yeah, let's do that. We can do that. We can set it up. Let's do it. And he wouldn't do it. He didn't want that. He wanted to take him, and that was it, and he couldn't take him. So he didn't see him until the restraining order got dropped. So that uh, happened. <laughs> um, and then he'd see him sporadically every now and then and then uh, he went to prison for a while so that gave me kind of a break um, and then um, when he got out of prison he 
took Gage one day. Gage is about a year old, I think. And um, he took him for the day. He took him swimming with some of his friends and stuff like that. And um, I was actually told that uh, his mother would be there with him all day. That was not the case. And uh, that kind of really ticked me off because I didn't trust this guy with my kid, but I couldn't keep him from him. I didn't have any, any kind of reason to in the eyes of the court. So not that I was trying to, I was just trying to make my kids safe. I just wanted him to be safe. I grew up in a house with an alcoholic and a drug addict and I didn't want that for my kid. So, um, he, he took him that day and ended up at a friend's house. And, uh, when I picked him up, he had Gage in, locked in a bedroom, um, with a mattress on the floor. Uh, Gage was hanging off like his butt, he was on, on his knees with his butt up in the air, off, hanging off the mattress, his head on the mattress. And, um. When I picked him up, he started crying. Well, I just wanted to get out of there. I didn't want to be there at all. So I took him out, put him in the car seat, and we left. I didn't I didn't change diapers. I didn't do anything like that. I wanted to get home. It was only maybe a 15-minute drive to from his house to mine at that point. So I figured, you know, he might have a peed diaper, but he'll be fine for for the duration of the ride. Um, I could always pull over and change it if that was an issue. Uh, but 15 minutes is not a big deal, right? Turned out it was a big deal. Uh, this, this part still makes me mad. Um, Gage was screaming in the backseat of, of my car. And so I had Dave, who I was dating at, at the time, at that point, um, pull over into a Kroger parking lot. I said, you run in and get milk because we didn't have any milk in the house for Gage and I'll uh, change his diaper and we'll get back on the road and we'll be fine. He's probably just got a peed diaper. He didn't like to sit in a dirty diaper, peed or otherwise, for more than just a couple minutes. Um, I mean, obviously a, a poopy diaper, he, he would get a rash fairly quickly if he sat in it for more than a couple minutes. So I really, I mean, we really, really, really stayed on top of that. He rarely got diaper rash because I, my grandma and I were just on top of it. The minute we, we realized that he had gone, we got on top of it and got it changed. The minute that we realized that he had gone poop, we would change his diaper and we really, really stayed on top of that because we didn't want diaper rash, obviously, and we didn't want him to be in any pain. And I had told his biological dad that when he took him, I was like, you, you really have to be on top of his diaper. He's really sensitive right now. And he said that he understood. So when we pulled over and I got Gage out, he was screaming and screaming. And it turned out that this douchebag let my kid sit in a crappy diaper for only God knows how long. His butt had blisters on it. Blisters. I didn't even smell the poop. Like, I, I don't feel like it was a lot even. And he had blisters on his butt. So I don't know if he had done it before he went down and his biological dad just did not want to change his diaper. I, it was so bad that I, I just started to cry. I was so mad. And, um, so I, I changed his diaper. I cleaned him up as best I could. Um, and we went home and I put him in a warm bath and it was just, it was awful. There was nothing I can do to console this one-year-old who was in pain, and it was my fault.
it was my fault because I let this douchebag take my kid. And I knew that I shouldn't have. The, my mom voice said, don't let this kid, let this douchebag go take your kid. His mom's not going to be there. But like I said, I didn't ever want to give anybody a reason to say that I didn't let him see his kid. So, I called him. I called his biological dad. And I, uh, I told him what was up. That I thought it was bull that he hadn't changed his diaper. And, uh... He didn't care. So I made a rule that he could only see him if his if his biological dad's mother, which would be Gage's grandma, if she was gonna be there. I said, you're not taking my son anywhere ever again without a responsible adult with you. And if that means I have to come see you to let you see my son, then that's what I'll do. But this is never going to happen again. My kid is never going to be in pain with you ever again. So you quit seeing him. Um, until uh, 2010, when he took me to court for visitation because he got served as child support papers again. Uh, let's make this clear. He hadn't paid child support up until that. Like he paid sometimes. He'd pay for a couple months. He'd get a job and then they'd be okay to pay him under the table. So, which is cash for those who don't know. And then the child support would stop. And that was fine. I was totally fine taking care of my kid by myself. I didn't need his money. I, Dave worked and supported Gage. And my grandparents helped a ton. And Gage never wanted for anything. So uh, I figured it out. Okay, welcome back, guys. Uh... I had to stop abruptly yesterday in my story because Dave came home and he's annoying so <laughs> I stopped recording but I'm back to finish up. Um, I believe I left off saying that he had taken me to court in 2010 for visitation. Uh, we went. Um, he got visitation. I think that he thought if he took me to court that the court was just automatically going to tell him that um, well, you're his dad, so you can take him every other weekend, and that's just how it is, and he would have to, he would basically stick it to me, and, um, that's not actually accurate. <laughs> the court's not just gonna let someone who hasn't seen somebody in 10 years take them for an overnight visit. So, uh, the judge said to go ahead and set up, um, a meeting and let Gage get to know him a little bit before they went ahead and let him take him overnight. And so we set up three or four different meetings. I talked to him over text. I talked to him over Facebook. He always said that he was totally down to meet, that he was good to go. And then the time would come and he wouldn't show up and he wouldn't answer my calls and he wouldn't answer my texts. And I would even message him the day we were going, the day we were supposed to meet, and ask him, are you going to show? And he would say yes every single time, and every single time we'd be sitting there in this park or a restaurant waiting for him to show up, and he never would. He just didn't. So when time came to go back to court to see how it was going and everything, he didn't show for that either. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I assume because he didn't get what he wanted. 
he didn't get uh, to take him overnight like he thought he would, so he it was his way or no way, and it turned out to be no way. So, um, fast forward to last year, which was 2017, and, uh, no, it, well, it was either last year or this year, I don't know, it was a minute ago, um, Gage started asking questions again, and he wanted to see his dad again, so I, um, I made that happen, and, uh, they were texting, and Gage is a very truthful person. He wants you to tell the, him the truth at all times. He doesn't want you to sugarcoat anything. He doesn't want you to assume that he can't handle it. He wants the truth always. And I've always strived to be very truthful with him in any question that he asks. I mean, age appropriate truth. He started talking to his biological dad and he asked him if he was still drinking and doing drugs. And he told him no. And Gage knows better than that. Uh, he knows better from what he has seen. He knows from what he has heard. He knows from what the grandmother on the other side has told him. And he knew that that was a lie. And so Gage called him on it. And his dad blocked him on Facebook. <laughs> Who blocks their own kid on Facebook? <laughs> I don't understand. But whatever. Uh, so that was either last year or the beginning of this year. And Gage, it hasn't come up again. Honestly, I don't think Gage even cares. He's totally fine with Dave being his dad he always has been and that's just how it's gonna be and that's fine but that's why gage doesn't see his biological dad thanks for watching guys bye